Hey, how's it going, guys? We are back on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Just kind of worked out that way. I had today off because I'm on vacation, so don't expect. Don't drop all plans on Tuesdays from now on. This is just a temporary Tuesday night live stream. I was just too lazy to make a thumbnail. But nonetheless, welcome back to my live stream. Once again, I'm Carson, as you probably already know if you're watching this. I have a whole bunch of slab comic books to go over. These are actually some of the ones I sent off last March. So I guess almost a 10-month turnaround time with pressing on these. So there you go. 10 months is what it takes to get a comic back for moderns. I'll get back to you on the bronze or before stuff because I'm still waiting on that. Um, but nonetheless, I got some graded stuff to show. And I got, I actually read stuff leading up to this live stream. So... I guess, you know, no one's probably going to fill up the room anyway, so we're going to start with all of the stuff that I got a chance to read today, but I did want to say a special shout out to Mr. Chris Barrett saying Happy New Year. Hey, that goes the same for you, Chris. Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you for stopping by earlier, um, but I did have a couple fun reads that I managed to pick up from my store last, so I think after I get done with the, the haul, we'll go over some stuff I've been picking up in the month of December because... Why not? But I do like to make sure I talk about something I have read. Um, I did get a chance to read Swamp Thing Green Hell. This actually wasn't too bad. Really like Doug Mankey's art as usual. His Green Lantern run is excellent, so I expected, expected nothing less. And Jeff Lemire writing Swamp Thing. Well, we've seen that before, so I had high hopes for that. Uh, but I really did enjoy this read. Basically, if, if you haven't read anything at all about this, the world pretty much in... There's no continuity, so it doesn't matter, but the world in this book is coming to an end. Uh, most of the survivors of Earth are, like, left on, like, whatever island there is left. There's, like, a big mafioso trying to control everything. He wants food and provisions. There's, like, a father-daughter combo that doesn't have the ability to give them to him, so the father, of course, is getting beat up. Meanwhile, all the, the pillars of Earth are talking, the red... Um, the black and the green, they pretty much concluded they need to wipe out the rest of the humans. So you have a whole new swamp thing born because the green has decided it needs to be the one to wipe out the rest of the humans because the red and the black can't act on it for reasons. <laughs> so nonetheless, we get a super evil, cool looking version of swamp thing created by Doug Mankey here. And it gets really gruesome at points. The swamp thing is tearing everything up. Um, so one of the elders of this island village that's left grabs the daughter of the main character and decides they need to go see this guy at the lighthouse. You think you know, the way it's going in the story, you think it's going to be Alec Holland, but I guess spoilers if you haven't read it. So I'm, I'm going to put the book down when spoilers over. But spoilers, the guy in the lighthouse actually turns out to be John Constantine, an older version. And when John Constantine kind of gets wind that there's a new swamp thing in town what does he do he gets his magic stuff out and he summons alec holland the original swamp thing that we all know and love and he is furious he's basically been in i think heaven because he he was happy where he is at he is not happy that alec or i'm sorry that uh, john constantine brought him back and when constantine has to tell him like dude you gotta go fight swamp thing uh, that's where the story concludes um, I guess there's going to be three more of these total. I think I'm going to be on board for this because this is one of the funner books I've actually read for a little bit, even though it's a black label, seven bucks an issue. Um, I think since there's only two more, I'm just going to go ahead and pay pay the bill, I guess, to DC and get the other two, but I really did. It's a great looking book. It's Mankey's best art I've seen probably since it's great, like that black hand issue of Green Lantern way back when. I, I think this is some of his finest art. He, he does gore. Very well without overdoing it, in my opinion. So this is definitely my favorite thing I've read all in a while, long time. So love me some Swamp Thing. Um, Barrett's clarifying. No, it's like I said, it's it's going to be three issues. I actually did Google it after I'm because I didn't want to subscribe to this and it'd be like $10, $7 issues. I'm just going to wait for the hardcover, obviously. Speaking of Black Label, I think this was either like a three or four issue miniseries. I could be wrong on that as well. Um but One Dark Knight, I had to get this one because I love Jock on Batman. That, like, If it's Jock and Batman, I'm probably going to have to buy the book. So when I heard he is not only going to be drawing a book, he's going to be writing it. Um, I was hoping 
you know, he deliver, have the same or moderate level of success, kind of like, you know, Sean Gordon Murphy with his white knight stuff. He was mainly known for his art, but then he got a chance to write and knocked it out of the park. This one I, I enjoyed. I don't know if it's quite the white knight level, obviously, because the story is pretty basic so far. There's a, a metahuman named EMP. Um, I guess the, the E stands for Edward. I don't really remember what the M and the P, but more or less you can guess his powers. He has EMP powers. So basically there's a whole thing in Gotham. They're trying to transport him from, I think, Arkham to Blackgate, which you even see a map on like how long this is going to take. And a lot of people want him dead because they know his power or they can kidnap him and use his power for bad things. And there's a, a lot of gang activity trying to get the EMP. And Batman is pretty much the only thing standing in the way of the bad guys and this new character i think it's a new character if not definitely leave somewhere down below and let me know where i can find this character i suppose but as you would expect from a book called one dark knight uh you can kind of take out that k because they're gonna have one long dark knight because emp's powers do get activated he even falls into the bat signal causing a big dark knight for all of gotham i found it kind of goofy at the end when we know his powers we know what's going to happen. And Batman still has the audacity to get on. Like, hey, Alfred, you still there? Alfred, Alfred, like, EMP took out your comms, dude. Like, I, I've seen enough, like, movies. I saw, like, Broken Arrow. I know how this stuff works. Your, your comms go out. So Batman, being, like, one of the smartest people in the world, still has to call for Alfred. That did bother me a little bit. Uh, but this story is beautifully drawn, as we know from Jock's art. His best character he draws, in my opinion, at least in DC, is Batman. So at least you're going to get it for the art. We'll see where the story goes. So far, like I said, basic in terms of the storytelling, excellent in terms of the art, especially on the uh, the magazine size format. But once again, you're paying that seven dollar bill. Sorry, Chris Barrett. I know, I know, we're, me and you were cheap, and this was hard for me to do, but I got to represent the artists I like. Um, so there's those two books that were a lot of fun. While I was in the shop, I also picked up a couple dollar bin books. Um, I always buy this every time. Every single time I see it, Fantastic Four 348, the new Fantastic Four. I think I'm trying to find the single world's whitest copy because every copy I find of this is like browned or aged or what have you. So pretty good find for a buck. I think I still got one slightly better than this, um, but nonetheless, still happy for a buck. And then I couldn't turn this down. Spider Boy number one for a dollar, and it's a newsstand. I had to get it because it was a newsstand. I actually was was late to going somewhere because I bought this and my shop owner was, he was really into talking about Amalgam and nineties comics, which spider boy will do that. It'll bring up those conversations. So one of my all time favorite books from when I was a kid, spider boy from the DC Marvel crossover and getting in a new state. is just a nice added bonus. Now I just need to get that spider boy team up which I don't think I've ever owned for whatever reason. That second wave of amalgams, I was even telling my shop owner, like, if you're all across those, let me know, because I actually do need those for my collection. Uh, I did read some Ice Cream Man this week, issue number 27. Uh, this like this book just keep, is like, when does it get too weird? I think they may have almost found their ground here. Uh, it starts off with a guy going out on a date, eating some ice cream. He has a stroke, and I think he dies on the sidewalk. Meanwhile, there's a bug, three bugs. One of his names Gruer or Greg. He's just missing that E. And he starts to turn into a human for reasons because it's the book Ice Cream Man. And he eventually develops arms and a leg, but he still looks like a bug, like on the cover. And then he falls asleep in a park, wakes up days later. He has a mortgage, a house, kids. And I guess the moral of the story was, you know, a bug's life is easy. You survive, like. In the real world, you have problems like promotions, demotions, bills, kids, the stars. He, he finally sees the stars for the first time, and then somehow he like gets shot by a disgruntled employee and turns back into a bug, but he's dead. I don't know, because Ice Cream Man, like I said, they may have found that line where it just gets a little too weird, but I did still find it funny, so yeah, Ice Cream Man. Next up, got Nightwing 87, the issue that is one continuous image. And it was fine. I don't think I had, like, the, the same impact on me as, say, like, Silver Surfer. What is it? Sorry, it's on the wall. 11 from that, you know, mid-2000s run where it was, like, the Mobius strip issue. And it kind of reads uh, forwards and backwards. Uh, cool experiment. Don't get me wrong, but it read really fast. Um, but, yeah, I do always appreciate, like, the experimental art and comics. 
and I do need to read this whole run at some point. At least this issue kept my interest in what's going on in Nightwing now because I've, I've heard great things. I haven't read the, any near the whole run. Maybe like one other issue, but I really did like his dog Bitewing. And the chemistry as with Batgirl is always great. I hope there's more of her in that run. But I think I'm going to try out a hardcover after reading this. I, I did enjoy it that much. I don't even know why this was in my pile. It's probably one of those instances where my brother ordered something and I got it by mistake. But I got I think this is the, the Momoko variant on Hulk. I don't own any Peach Momoko anything. So, yeah, I don't know why this got put in my pile. But I did want to read this because I think it's in that stack over there. I've yet to read because uh, it's Ryan Otley drawn uh, Hulk. And if he's not going to do Spider-Man, I think Hulk is another excellent character for him to be doing for sure. Um, so definitely enjoyed that. Uh, but what I didn't enjoy is the story. Like I expected more out of a Donny Kate story. And so far in this one, it was somehow Banner's gone absolutely mental after, I guess, I'm assuming the events of Immortal Hulk. I didn't finish that entire run start to finish. And apparently Banner has lost his mind completely. He's a bad dude now. And he has used anger to take control of the Hulk and turn him into a spaceship. And he's wreaking havoc to try to get a giant Iron Man suit used to fight Celestials so he can fly off to space. I did not like this read. I Maybe I, there's more that I need to know, but it's at the same time, it's an issue one. They should at least give me a primer on if something's changed with the character. This was not for me. I will I will not be reading the rest of this run. <laughs> so hard pass on that one. Everything else I actually did enjoy, though. Chris Barrett says, I haven't gotten a new book for like four months. I feel like that's the last time I read a book too, Chris. So that's why I at least wanted to make sure for this stream I read something so I'd have something to talk about. Because I've been buying some books, but I've like with the holidays, we've all been busy. I know I've been a, pretty busy to get into anything, um, but yeah, that that was the reading part of my haul. Bub says that was fast. Oh, I, I'm going to drag this one out tonight. I'm just getting started, dude. <laughs> I think I got a whole box of CGC. I got like three grocery bags of comics over there, so we're just going to put these to the side, and we're going we're gonna to show some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because it's my channel. That's kind of what I do here, is show a lot of turtle books and everything else along the way. Um, but that's why I put nine slabs instead of eight because I got a ninth slab. I completely have forgotten the show for the last month, or if I have, I just was anxious to show it again, I guess. So before I get to the first slab, I do have three turtle books that I, I got from eBay purchases. So I'll start with these two. Uh, I got some, uh, they're a little bit lower grade, but I paid maybe like, I think either 10 or 15 a piece for them. Uh, I got a Turtles Adventures number one from the ongoing run. I didn't have a newsstand copy, so I definitely wanted to make sure I at least got one. And I think, I can't remember the printing on this one, because you got to be careful buying these, especially this one here, because there's so many printings of it um, that are only listed in, I think this is the first printing because it doesn't say anything in there. So, but yeah, I want to make sure I got a newsstand on that. And like I said, it was cheap enough along with the next book. I don't mind a mid-grade copy of it. Um, because I just keep hoarding these things. And the other one I got um, was, of course, this one. Another copy of Adventures miniseries number one. Didn't have the newsstand on it, but this one, it's got tons of spine creases. Um, it is not a good, good quality copy, but I'll probably keep it in the collection because I didn't have a newsstand prior. Now I do. So I had to at least make sure I got one of those. The price has been dropping on this, so... You're out there collecting turtle stuff and thinking about getting this. It's not the worst time to get in on this book. Now that people know about it, obviously it's it's still out of control, but at least it's found its way out of that triple figure range. Uh, the next one was another eBay purchase, and it was a gamble that some may say I lost, but I think I still won on. I'll just be perfectly honest. I paid 40 bucks for this book, um, which it may be worth around that but i think the quality's good still for what i got um teenage mutant ninja turtles number two this was advertised as a first print now it's kind of hard to tell the difference between first print and second print um without just opening up the book but it was specifically advertised as a first print so i basically what i told myself is it looks real enough to the very least if i get it and it's a second print 
it'll at least still be worth the $40 I paid for. Because I think even a second print is still a triple figure book. And that's exactly what happened. This I got it home. Turned out to be a second print. But I mean, I, I could probably still send this off to get graded. I'd hope at least to be the 8.5 to 9.0 range. It does have a tiny little white spot there at the end. Um, but the fact that I have to be nitpicky with this book, because I don't think it was ever bagged or boarded until I got it home in this bag and board. Um, the fact that I feel like I could still get a near mint to very fine plus grade out of it, I was still happy with the purchase. I did leave that feedback to the seller like, hey, you might want to check your printings because it blatantly says on the inside of this that it's a second print. So, yeah, second print. But nonetheless, I still need one of the second print to get slabbed eventually because the only other one I have of this is signed by Eastman and Laird. And I want to enjoy that signature. It's on the inside of the book. Uh, so I'm not going to send that one specifically to get printed. Now, Bob says the first print is more pale in color. Hard to, yeah, it's very hard to tell in pics. I've heard that before, uh, but honestly, I couldn't tell without like just blatantly asking, you know, can you, and asking, I should probably just ask for the picture of the interior. But at the same time, I still kind of wanted a second print for forty dollars. Like it didn't matter to me. I figured I'd just get it home and inspect it and make sure it wasn't a destroyed book or you know bad odor or off white or what have you. So I was still happy with the quality. That's why I decided to keep it, and not throw like a fuss and get eBay involved. I, I didn't need to do that. I was still happy with the purchase at the end. And then here's one I purchased a long time ago. I would, I probably did show the book really quick, but then I immediately sent it to CGC. So. I guess the first grade reveal I got to show off tonight is this bad boy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one. This is the third print, of course. You can tell by that blood spatter on the middle T there. Got back in an 8.0. Um, this is probably going to be the closest I get to the actual number one for a very long time until I hit the lottery. Because uh, right now, it's just a terrible time to buy first and second prints of this book. I just happened to get a respectable price on a raw copy. Um and I'm happy it came back at an 8.0. I I was kind of hoping like my bottom dollar was this grade here. I didn't want less than that. So I was ecstatic that when I unboxed this about a month or two back, it came back at 8.0. So this will definitely be staying in the collection. This is one of my favorite books in my PC right now. So happy to get the Turtles one, third print, and an 8.0. But like I said, maybe one day I'll think about that, you know, first and second print. But it's... It's hard to justify right now, really, is when one's five figures and the other's four figures. It's just, uh, I, that's not fun to me anymore. That's just a lot more anxiety. All right. So before we get to the box, I actually, this, I should have called this 10 slabs because my brother got me a nice uh, birthday slash Christmas present. Uh, so he got me a slab. <laughs> so my slab collection is growing exponentially in these last few months. Um, so he got me this, Chris Barrett. I think you're going to love this book. This is WWE number one, that awesome Macho Man cover in 9.8. Um, so I didn't even tell him I wanted this or anything like that. He just obviously knows he, I like wrestling. I've been getting a lot of my collection graded. So I guess this probably was, you know, a, um, a home run, if you know me, uh, on ter in terms of if I like this or not. So very happy with that. So thanks, brother. Really appreciate that. And he also threw, and I guess this came in the auction as well, this George the Animal Steel Retailer Incentive cover. So nice little pairing there, especially if you know their history from like WrestleMania 3. Um, so really cool right there. Very happy with that. There's the uh, <laughs> the Comic Core Facebook group calling. So someone needs to tell those guys I'm alive, I guess. All right, without further ado, we'll finally get in to this awesome CGC haul. And I'll be perfectly honest. I do know most of the grades here. I peaked. I couldn't resist on this one because I've waited so long for these books. I just started reading the grades as soon as I saw it was being shipped. Um, I used to have gimmicks and graphics and banners to like display. Cause this is for March. This is what, like, if you watch that video I did last March, these are the books I sent off. So Luckily, I kept the grade guesses on my phone um, because I used to have the banners in and someone deleted them. I didn't know till 19 minutes ago. So there's going to be some me looking at my phone and giving you guys the guess I had so we can finally tell how terrible I am at grading comic books. Or maybe I was good. Let's find out. So the first one 
is Sandman number eight. This is the first appearance of Death. We all know and love Death. She is one of our favorite characters here. Um, so I guessed an 8.5 when I sent this off. An 8.5. And then there's the back of the book with the Indiana Batman logo. So I was very happy because I guessed exactly correct on this book at an 8.5. Um, so I think I only paid like a dollar fifty for this book. So most of these books in here, I don't think there's one I paid more than a few bucks. So actually, there is one. There's one I paid triple figures for. Uh, so I was very happy I got a good grade on that because I was if I, if I got a lower grade on that, it would have been devastated. But everything else is probably like dollar make you holler books. So Sam A number eight. First death and an 8.5. And we're going to do these in no particular. Actually, we'll save that next one for, for last because that this is, there's one in here I, I paid for. I don't, I try to pay for too many books, but I paid for that one. We'll go with the most disappointing book next. So we got Masters of the Universe, number one. It's a newsstand. So I think I guessed like a 9.0 on this thing. Yeah, I guess 9.0. And this is the one that troubles me the most. Because I got a 7.5 on it. And they have a couple of graders notes. Like, I guess looking at it now, there are probably four to five ticks. And it does have a soft corner. But I don't know. I don't know. Just looking at some of the other books, I got like the 8.5. Because I did look a few of these other ones over. Like the 8.5 Sandman number eight. I don't know why that would have got a whole grade higher than, say, Masters of the Universe. I mean, there and the color ticks on there are not that big. So I figured it still would have been like low nines, high eights, maybe, I guess by high eight, I mean, 8.5, but to be a 7.5, I just don't see it. I still don't. And I don't think their graders notes were that good enough to justify 7.5. That being said, I think I paid three to $5 for this book. So I don't see a substantial loss in this. This is one of the ones I was hoping to come back a little bit higher so I could flip this one to pay for the grading because grading fees cost a lot of money, especially You've heard about the, the hype and the grading increase coming up in like a month. So I'm not going to complain anymore about that because I've already seen other channels whine and complain already. No, I don't want to I don't want to make them sound negative, but people are complaining about the price hike. And that's understandable. That's what happens when prices go up. We got my first subscriber ever, Fish Tropic. What is going on, man? How you doing? Chris says I used to be over back when he had yeah, I'm not over anymore. I was never over. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Bob says, Animal was my favorite heel as a kid. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. George the Animal Steel. Yeah, he was great. Bob says, All my corners are soft except for one. <laughs> a good old Bob. Carson buying a three-figure book is like the fact that I won three Slabbies legitimate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched the Slabbies yet. Nice. You won three Slabbies. Congrats, man. And Yeah. Like I said, I, there's probably like a very small handful of my collection I've actually paid three figures for. It's probably... I don't know if I can, it'll probably be more, but I bet, it's, I bet it's five or less. Maybe slightly more, but it's probably less than 10 without thinking about it too hard because I don't want to. All right, let's see what we got next year. We've got Saga of Swamp Thing number 20. So this is going to be the first Alan Moore on Swamp Thing here. So this is his first issue. And let's see what I guessed on here. Uh, so Saga of Swamp Thing 20. I actually guessed a 9.8. I don't know. Why I guess so high on this one, I already see one mark. I just should have looked at the back of this a little more. And that's what I'm finding when I'm sending these things and getting the back. Like, I should have looked at the back. And I think a lot of people make the same mistake. And I got to say this, too. The CCS press job, not the greatest in the world. Uh, but I got a 9.4 on that. So not too bad, um, considering it's from 84. So start of the copper age to getting a 9.4. That's about where I want to be with this book. I wouldn't want to be too much lower then 9.2 9 is probably the lowest I'd go on my copper age, you know, non-keys, I guess. If it was non-key, like I've sent off some Spider-Mans, I'm hoping those are about 8.5. But a book like this, I was hoping 9.294. So pretty, pretty happy with that. And I think I guess the 9.2 on the next issue, Saga of Swamp Thing 21, which this is the one I was more interested in getting back. Um, it's the better read, in my opinion. It's a key issue. Uh, but I got the 9.4 on that. One of the greatest Alan Moore comics ever, but I do have to state this. I do not remember this staple being like that. I'm going to have to go back and look at my original video and see if this is just a CCS screw up 
or not, but that does that look like a 9.4 comic, like compared to the 7.5 Masters of the Universe? So, I mean, that sticks out like a sore thumb to me. Like, you can see it from back here. So, cool, it's a 9.4, but was this the only thing back from holding it as a 9.8? Did this damage happen at pressing? Look, I don't know. So, I think I'm, have to, I'm glad I did that old video so I can compare and contrast the condition of the books from when I sent them. Because I did the reason I got a lot of these presses, I want to make sure that they were going to get that grade bump from CGC. I'll, I'll, I will be completely honest about that. I still think CCS to CGC gives you a little bit of that 0.2 bump, in my opinion, no matter, regardless of how good the pressing went. So 9.4 on that. Uh, staple I'm indifferent on. Um, next up, we got First Bucky, Captain America 6 coming up. I guessed a 9.4 on this book, and I got a 9.4 on it. So not too bad. Like I said, usually if I'm sending books from the 2000s, it's usually 9.6 or 9.8. It's what I want. But 9.4, it's what I guessed. It's what I expected. And it's, you know, what I got. So I'm just debating if I want to send my Winter Soldier variant on this. I don't know if it'd get a 9.4 back is why I haven't sent it yet. I would say it's probably going to be a 9.0 to 9.2. Hopefully it ranks in the nines. If it doesn't, then I would probably just completely flip it. But nonetheless, exactly what I expected there. Next up, we got Ultimate Spider-Man, number one, white cover. I guess 9.6, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And I was right on that one as well, 9.6. Um, book I always wanted since I got back into collecting. Uh, I could definitely see the 9.6 reasoning right there at the bottom. It has a little bit of a white spot or whatever you want to call that. So definitely see why this would have came back a 9.6 over a 9.8, no problem. But yeah, one of the runs that got me back into comics, you know, I don't want to say as a kid, I guess more like in college, was Ultimate Spider-Man. So this was always like the go-to book for Ultimate Spider-Man collectors. So I figured this would be a fun one to get sent and get slabbed. Um, definitely staying in the personal collection there on this book. Uh, now I think we just got the big dogs left. So we got, well, we'll start with this one. This is the one I paid a hundred bucks exactly for. So triple figures. I know it's crazy. Well, yeah, I think I just thought of the six books or so less than 10, not less than five. Um, so we got DC presents number 26. And what did I guess on this? So I think I went nine point. Yeah, I went 9.2 on this book so 9.2 on this one for the price i paid for i wanted a nine plus copy and you know if if i wanted to buy a nine plus copy already slabbed i would have had to pay probably what four or five times why i paid for this anyway so i love the new teen titans i love teen titans i want to make sure i had a key book uh, at a great grade and i got myself a 9.6 on that one and it's the new stand version on top of it so one of my favorite books already in my collection now too. Um, plus, you know, it's a shame I couldn't have sent this off and, you know, got it gold labeled by some of the other creators like George Perez is doing his, you know, one last CGC signing now. So it would always be cool to get that gold label treatment on this. But I think I'm just going to keep this as is. I got a ton of signatures already from, you know, pretty much all the creators on this book who still sign, you know, Jim Starlin, George Perez, Marv Wolfman. So... Very happy this came back at 9.6, and I don't plan on altering this book at all anytime soon. It's definitely going in the glass case downstairs. And the last book I can officially classify as my best stealth buy of all time. I'm calling it. I probably will never top this stealth buy ever in my life. Um, Sandman number one. There's a reason I saved this book for last. So when I sent this off, what did I guess on Sandman number one? I put it at 9.6, so I knew it was a great quality book, but it's also, you know, coming up, shows come up on Netflix, you know, there's going to be people starting to move a lot of copies of this because of that alone. It's already, It already should have been in everybody's collection already because it's, you know, Neil Gaiman's big entry into comics in the United States, especially with DC going into Vertigo, and boom, 9.8. So this being a 9.8 makes this... My best stealth buy of all time because I only paid $1 for this copy of Sandman. So I really don't know what I'm ever going to buy for the rest of my collecting that's going to top this one. I I mean, I really don't. I just hit the jackpot that day. I went to Half Price Books and bought this for a buck. 
So I am extremely happy. I think this launch is a, it's a near four figure book now, but obviously stupid me is not going to sell unless I need to pay off my mortgage tomorrow, I guess. So this one's definitely staying in the collection for as long as I can afford to hang on to it, which, you know, should be for a while, obviously. Uh, but yeah, the fact that I got these two back in high grade, um, Definitely makes the weight worth it. Are there some sketchy things going on in this box? Absolutely. I'm still not thrilled about that 7.5 Masters of the Universe with really no other notes on it. Um, and then the 9.4 Swamp Thing 21 with the, with the weird staple. I'm definitely have to go back and rewatch the, the stream on that one because I just, I just do not remember sending it off like that. I think that happened in pressing. But these two books, extremely happy with. Definitely going to hold on to these for as long as I can. Um, so very happy with, with those two right there, not to mention some of the other 9.0 scores I got there. So very happy with all that stuff. And let's see what the chat has to say. Barry saw a Bockwinkle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick Bockwinkle of grading companies, like great in the ring, but no charisma. <laughs> he had decent promos. I take that back. Just not during his WCW run. But anyway, I was there five point was better since I like the classics. Yeah. I've been debating, I guess I almost have to with the price increase, sending a lot of just pre-1975 stuff. And I've been sitting on a lot of stuff just thinking about sending it, but not because of the higher price. Um, but yeah, I'm, I might have to send one last big thing before the price rates. And then I think my membership comes up in March, which so far, I don't know if I plan on renewing because right now I'm just sending what I think needs to be extra taken care of in my collection because I do have some books I really like. But they're not great grades, obviously. If I send them, they're just going to confirm the fact that they're low grade. And I'd rather enjoy the low grade raw than have a slab that says it's like a 3.5 or something like that. Uh, Bub says, congrats. Thank you, sir. And Chris Barrett says, well, let me tell you something bad, Chad. That 9.8 Sandman is shocking. And Fish Tropic loves the books. Awesome, man. So let's say I got a little bit of time on my hands tonight. Oh, here. I got actually got a couple games I can show, too. So I got a whole stack of half-price books. Fun. There that you know since since it's only 7:30, I've only been talking for half an hour. Why don't I show some games? So the other day I had to go get my um, my breaks redone. So that's like, I guess yeah, that's why I was selling on Instagram to pay for new breaks. <laughs> so that was nice. Some people sell to get a bigger key and get more books. I'm like, well, I can sell some books and pay for my breaks. So that's kind of what I did. So I was in you know basically Pet Boys sitting for an eternity. So luckily they're right next to half price books. So I went shopping over there for a while and I found a couple games. So I found uh the Masters of Tarasca Sai Star Wars PS1 game for three bucks. Disc only. This is probably exactly worth three bucks. But I thought it'd be fun. It's that goofy Star Wars fighting game for PlayStation One. <laughs> so I bought that as kind of a gag. But this I might actually end up reselling. I just have yet to test it and make sure it works. And I guess I could check out live here on the camera. It is actually not that scratched up. This is a Tech Romancer for the Sega Dreamcast. So I don't even know what kind of game this is. I could pretend to talk about it and like I know stuff about it. But I just saw like Sega Dreamcast and more like Capcom Japanese influence. And I kind of just know from the game collecting I do. I don't really collect a lot for the Dreamcast. But I know this is probably worth a lot of money because I know I've never seen this before. So I think that I, my research is probably like a $75 to $100 game without the box. So that at least make my weight at Pet Boys work, worth it if I can get this working and resell it. But I thought that was a fun little thing I found while I was waiting for my car to get done. All right, let's 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 see what we got. I don't even know what's even over here. Let's let's show some books. Um, here's my like yet to read pile. I think this is from the previous stack of books I got from my local shop. Got Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer. I guess this is like Buffy meets Dark Knight Returns slash Old Man Logan slash Last Ronin uh, because everyone else is doing it. Why not Buffy? So uh, out of dumb curiosity, I had to buy this. So I'll probably read this right after the stream tonight. Uh, I got this book called Friday, Ed Brubaker, Marcos Martin. That's all I need to know. Don't even know what else the book is about, but I love that creative team. So I threw it in the pile. We got aggressively relaxing. What's going on, man? Nice to see you in the chat. Chris Barrett says I had to get my rear assembly replaced right before Christmas. That was, yeah, I know, car work, man. I got two Turtles books I'm behind on now. So Turtles 123, 124. So I need to get that. Red, I, 
I don't know. I, I own two copies of this book. I don't like that. If anyone needs a copy of this, let me know, I guess, because I don't want one copy, let alone two. Yeah, sorry. If you're just joining us, I was not a fan of this book, and I own two copies now. So hit me up if you need a copy or if you bought something from me, I'll just throw it in your pile. So next time I have an Instagram or something, hints at the end of the stream. If you buy something from me, I'll give you a Hulk number one if you ask for it. Just I'm not going to charge you. I did not like that book. <laughs> All right. Half price books haul number one. So we got this Earth 226. So I had to get the uh, Superman Earth 23 appearances. These Earth 2 books are going up when he inter gets introduced into the storyline. So for a buck, I couldn't pass that up. Uh, back to when I was a kid, this is the first comic I ever owned. So every time I see it, I therefore have to buy it. So I found another dollar copy of the fourth print of Superman 75 Death of Superman. So always literally have to buy this every time I see it. I don't even know how many copies I own of Superman 75, but according to my impulse of brain, it is not near enough. So I'm going to keep buying them. Found these for 20 cents. Uh, Why the Last Man, 58 and 57. I believe if I remember right, spoilers if you haven't read the book, but you've had like, what, 20 years I believe one of these issues, I think it's 57, is the death of Agent 355. So, heartbreaking issue for sure. I can't remember. It's probably issue 58 here, if I remember right. Sorry, now I'm going to watch them. I'm, I'm going to dip. Yep. I, yeah, I just devastated myself. So, I'm going to put these down because it's heartbreaking. So, death of 355 and the Why the Last Man. I found one, two, three. I found five copies of Invincible Iron Man number three for 20 cents a piece. So I paid a dollar for all of these. I think this is technically either the first time she's called Iron Heart or gets the Iron Heart armor that is on this cover. Something that's a first in the world of Iron Heart. Um, and it's already heating up to like 10 or 20 bucks. So I was like, I'd be dumb to leave these copies there for 20 cents. So I picked them all up to the point where the the guy at the register who was pricing comics, he's like, What what what's up with this the stack of Iron Man's? I'm like, I told him exactly what I just told you guys. So I think he's just like, yeah, I probably should have priced those more than 20 cents. So sometimes if they get like multiple copies, I guess these probably came from a retailer or reseller. They'll just take like the first copy and put it in for a dollar. And then they'll just put everything else in the 20 cent bin. So they don't have to bag and board it, I guess. And then I got GI Joe 132 new stand for a buck. So if you guys watch these streams, you know, if I see, so, uh, over 100 GI Joe, I buy it. Like if it's cheap enough, yeah, these these things you just don't see. And when you do, they're on eBay for like ten dollars or more, even if it is like spine tick condition. So slowly trying to chip away at this run, but 155 for me, unfortunately, is looming. Uh, <laughs> it's another book I'm probably never going to want to afford because it is triple digits for almost no reason. There's nothing really key about it besides it's the last issue and it's low print run. Um, also on my <clears throat> to read pile, life story, pretty much the entire thing. Here's number five. Um, at this point, I thought I was just dropping it, but I have almost every issue but one now. So I'm just going to collect the last issue. Uh, I had to get this though. The thing number one, or I'm sorry, number two. Yeah, number two. Kevin Eastman doing uh, non turtle covers. Feel like that's becoming more of a thing, and I really think so. And pun on thing, of course. Um, don't plan on reading this, but I have to get the Kevin Eastman cover for the thing. Really like that. Um, I have mixed feelings on these next few books, but I was just like, you know, I'd feel kind of like dumb if I didn't buy these because uh, this is just marketing toward me at this point. Uh, all these like dynamite comics with the turtle swipe covers ended up in my pull list somehow. So they were also doing the issue twos like this, and they look terrible. So I definitely did not do them for the issue number two swipes. But they had a lot. I don't even know if I got them all. There might only be four. There may be ten. I don't know. But, yeah, I ended up picking up four of those because why not? <laughs> and then I have a couple Wonder Girls. Just great covers on those. Um, I mean, come on. Great covers all day. So a lot of cover buys this round. That's why I haven't read too much from I got the Brian Bowen Swamp thing. I do want to read this Rom V run at some point. I've heard good things. Here's one. Issue two. I didn't even know I had an issue one yet. Magic Order uh, Volume 2 is out. Definitely need to read that because I really enjoyed the first volume. 
Another great Jenny Frizen cover there on Catwoman 37. I uh, had to get the Babstar cover on Batman 89, number four. Anytime Babstar does a cover, I'm probably going to get it, unless it's just too raunchy. Because <laughs> she does. Oh, here's another one of those uh, Turtles One Swipes Army of Darkness 1979. Probably the coolest because it has Ash on it. So that's the favorite, I guess. Uh, Batman 118, Tom McFarlane Swipe. That one was selling like crazy. I do like these best ofs. I guess they're getting ready to transition to uh, either Transformers and or Power Rangers. Or, oh, no, Power Rangers boom. They're doing the best ofs with another property. I think it's Transformers, but got the Shredder one because why not? It's a good one. It's got the, uh, it actually, I guess, uh, speculator note on this, which I've, I'm not going to resell this, obviously, but this has a complete color reprinting of Turtles number one in it. So I know there's a lot of people who like to, uh, by every reprint of TMNT number one. And uh, this is one of them, technically. So there you go. TMNT number one collectors, don't sleep on this best of Shredder. Because I ended up just rewriting the whole thing. <laughs> so cool find there. And then another Black Label book. I don't know if I'm going to get this whole thing, but it is a very beautiful book. Wonder Woman Historia. Um, Phil Jimenez, Kelly Sue DeConnick. Um, it's been a while since I I can recall Phil Jimenez doing a book, but he always liked his art. I was very happy to see him doing a book again, so I may have to check more of that out or at least save up for the hardcover later down the line. Let's see. We got more bags of fun here. Let's see what else we got. Another Half Price Books haul. Found a copy of <clears throat> Superman 78 for a dollar already. I don't even think they're done with the series yet. And people are already selling this for a dollar. So couldn't pass that one up because I think when I bought this, I don't think I got the A cover. Um, so I finally got an A cover for a buck. So that was pretty cool. Um, not only, you know, never mind, it's in a regular poly. Found a, um, a Marvel reprint of Miracle Man from the Neil Gaiman run. So I'm kind of learning my lesson on not buying these previously because you don't see the Miracle Man stuff at all. So when you do, it's usually a little inflated, but. Oh, no, never mind. It's two bucks because they sell Neil Gaiman's name. Sometimes I like to charge two bucks for the game and stuff. Uh, 20 Cent Finds. Got another Sword Daughter number one. Not sure why this ended up in my pile because I think I already have this book. But once again, someone may need it, I suppose. Got a newsstand copy of Wildcats number three. Uh, Space Bandits number one. Mark Millar, 20 cents. Manhattan Projects number one. I think I actually have the trade on this. I just... I. I feel like I've read this before, but it was a Hickman number one, so I picked it up. And then, yeah, another copy of Savage Dragon number three. It's a new stand. Uh, very early J. Scott Campbell art in this bad boy, if you didn't know. All right, more, more stuff. More stuff. And hopefully I hadn't showed this stuff before, but I guess it, it called a rerun <laughs> otherwise. I uh, got an ash can for Generation X for 20 cents because I am a sucker for anything 90s and what is more 90s than this book here it's generation x number one number two it's an ash can the only thing that's really missing off this is precious chromium i wish it was in chromium but you have to actually go and buy the first issue to get your chromium fix found a few copies of this for 20 cents the uh generations miss marvel meetup whatever you want to call it thought it was pretty cool for 20 cents Found this cool Judge Dredd cover. Thought it was Jock, but it's actually some guy named Barry Brown. Nonetheless, a really cool cover on Judge Dredd. Here's something you don't see every day. A copy of Tick number three. So I don't think this was the first printing. I can't. I think I did look it up and it wasn't. But anytime I see Tick for like less than five bucks, I'm picking that stuff up like it's turtles. Like you, these are not, these are books you don't see anywhere. So the, the two times I've seen Tick, I've bought the copies I've seen for like a, at least like a couple bucks or less. So these are no-brainers for me, these first-run Ticks. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 473. Not really sure why I bought this one. I think I just really like that Psylocke cover. Um, so pretty cool stuff there. Arachnite, number one, annual variant something. I honestly don't even remember putting that in the pile. <laughs> I would have put it back if I could go back in time, I suppose. We got Dark Horse Presents Aliens, number one. 
Bernie writes in Aliens cover. Uh, yeah, that, that was a no-brainer to Buck, so I was very happy with that one. Cool Bilson Kevich cover on Batman 596. And it's a new stand. Enjoyed that. Uh, my shop owner taught me if I see Batman Adventures anything for a buck, you just pick it up. So I found an issue 20 new stand for a dollar. Um, slowly actually putting together most of this run, minus the infamous, you know, Harley Quinn issue. And then Blue Beetle number one. I actually left this there a few times. I'm like, oh, with that show or movie or whatever, I may as well just pick up an unsigned copy. So that way, if I do feel the need to sell it, I won't have to sell my signed copy I have in my collection. And now we're getting to, I believe, the last last books of today. So I said, I, this is about all I, the collecting I do. It's got a half price books and wait for CGC to not send me anything. <laughs> so I found for 20 cents a piece, a good chunk of the Boris the Bear run. Like, I don't even know <clears throat> why I bought these. They just looked pretty cool, I guess. I know there's like one, it's a swipe of the Electra number one from Sinkevich and there's a few cool cut. I just kind of enjoyed these covers. So I ended up just getting them all for 20 cents a pop. So there's issue 18. Gotta love issue 16 with Indiana Jones on there. Issue 15, this Boris, this bear. So that one definitely got a laugh out of me at the store. Uh, and issue 14. And almost all these are swipe covers, which I love of 80s comics so yeah these were a lot of fun i never expected to find these for 20 cents so yeah boris the bear never really knew too much about him but i did see him once i left these comics there but the second time i went in they were still there especially this one i was going to pick up this one no matter what the swipe of the 25th anniversary marvels like i feel like once you buy all of those you should probably own a copy of boris the bear number nine i guess to complete your 25th anniversary Marvel stuff. We got Mars Comics. What's going on, man? He says, my comic book live stream. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's been a minute since I've done one of these. I kind of just skipped December. I needed to skip December. It was so busy that, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, we got Bub. Says he buys Tick every time. Yeah, I think everybody does that collects for Tick. It's, it's definitely one of those things you, you can't leave laying on the shelf. And Barrett says, a Chromium Expo I don't think even... The 90s could handle that. Barrett says, Boris the Bear's best friends are Turtles and Usagi. I could definitely see that. We got the double size. This one is called the Super Double Size Giant Must Have Mylar Bag 8th Issue Extra Hype Special. So even in the 80s, they had that Mylar. So there you go. The big double size giant must have Mylar Bag Special. <laughs> <laughs> Boris the Bear equals 20, Carson 2022 IG fire sale. You're probably not wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that comment up while I keep showing Boris the Bear. <laughs> so it's issue number seven. Uh, issue number three. Bob's like, all right, so he said he, he got him for 20 cents. So if he posts them for a dollar or more, I'm going to negotiate for at least 50 cents. So I'm kind of half tempted to post these now for a dollar on my next IG sale. And see how much Bub, if he really wants them, which he probably doesn't because they're Boris the Bear. <laughs> There's issue number two. So IG Fire Cell coming soon for Boris the Bear. You're probably not wrong. Uh, next up, how do you follow Boris the Bear? You follow him with Gumby, damn it. Gumby. Uh, I didn't know there was a Gumby comic. I'm sure it was, it was probably an inevitable thing. Um, but yeah, Gumby for a dollar. I wasn't going to leave this there. Are you kidding me? It's it's Gumby. Gumby. Got Dark Horse Comics number one. Just really like the Predator cover on that one. It's really cool. And even though I tried to sell this collection, I just keep buying stuff back. I got Daredevil 290. It probably won't fit in the, the box I just cleared out that I still have yet to sell. Those Daredevils. But I bought another one for only a dollar. I thought it was $2, but it was one. Uh, always like this Sabretooth cover. I think that's Sinkevich all day on there. X-Men Unlimited number two. Excellent cover on that one. I did not want to leave that one laying. Found some Frizzin' Wonder Woman for a dollar. I, I think I even sold a lot of these, but for a dollar, I couldn't leave that in the bin. That's just the way my brain works. And it's a great cover. So I guess, Bob, if you're looking for one of these for a buck, let me know. 
Unstoppable Wasp number one for a dollar. More Doomsday. Superman Action Comics. You can see my comment on Superman 75. Apply it to anything with Doomsday from that first run. And I'm going to keep buying these. I probably have five copies of each. I'm going to keep buying them. Countdown to Infinite Crisis number one. Another book I buy every time. I absolutely love this read. If you guys have not read this, let me know. And I, I if you buy something from me, I will send you this comic. I love reading this comic. It's one of my all-time favorite one-shots. Probably my top ten. I love Countdown Infinite Crisis. I think it's my favorite era of DC. Read this comic if you haven't had a chance. I, I can't say enough good things about it. Found Jurassic Park number one for two bucks. It is still in the poly bag. So they actually had two copies. There. I left the non-poly bagged one there. Um, but yeah, I didn't have a Jurassic Park number one in the collection. So luckily that fixed that. And then the last book of the day is Incredible Hulk 191. And thank you, uh, Steve for signing my copy of Incredible Hulk 191. It was a $3 bill, unfortunately, but big shout out to Steve for signing my Hulk. You guys know me. I love me some signatures, so there you go. And I believe that is the last of those half price books for today. Bob says, I would take prison in a dollar bin, but would leave her heart. <laughs> oh, Bob, you're one of a kind, man. We got John's comments with kids. Hope you're doing well. Happy New Year to you too, John. Nice to see you in the chat, so one more time, we'll we'll recap the slab part of the hull. If I can find my turtles one here, oh no, I've lost my turtles one. Oh, thank God, here it is. Oof. All right. Oh yeah, and then my brother did uh, give me this for Christmas. Oh yeah, Macho Man. Uh, WWE number one, nine point eight. That'll be going in the case for sure. Ninja Turtles number one, third print at an eight point oh. All time favorite book. Had to get it. Uh, we'll do those last. We'll go over. We'll put Stupid Masters of the Universe 7.5 up next. So 7.5 Masters of the Universe. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not happy about that one. I'm happy about the rest. So Sandman, number eight, first death, 8.5. Kind of like the number eight on that one because it's number eight. We got Al Moore's first Swamp Thing, issue number 29.4. Yeah, Captain America, number six, at a 9.4. First Bucky is Winter Soldier. Saga of Swamp Thing, 21, New Origin for Swamp Thing. Read it if you have it. It is must read, in my opinion, 9.4. Thank you, Alan Moore. Thank you, Legend, for the rhyming ability. <laughs> we got 9.6, Ultimate Spider-Man, number one, white cover. And then, in my opinion, the best two in the box, DC Comics Presents, 9.6, New Stand. Awesome book. First appearance, New Teen Titans. And greatest stealth buy of all time, $1 copy of Sandman, number one, came back 9.8. Yeah, my, fa my favorite one, My probably going to end up being throughout this whole great experience. That's probably going to be like my favorite thing I've gotten back, probably. All right. Chris Barrett says 9 point Mrs. Elizabeth to go along with that match. If there is one, yeah, let me know the cover. And I'll see if I can get it in team. That sounds awesome. Mars Comics says, nice. Chris Barrett says, I hope that fake $3 bill that you gave them for you. <laughs> hey, we got Brett Hess Art in the chat. He says, happy new year, brothers. Perfect store to be right next to Pet Boys. I said some lame grocery store nearby. Yeah, I have the choices of Lowe's and Pet Boys. Luckily for me now, I need a new oven and a new refrigerator. So next time I, I can sell a bunch of uh, stuff on IG, go buy stuff from Half Price Books to sell on IG, and then go buy an oven and a dishwasher, which that's my life. <laughs> Things keep breaking and I need to replace them. All right. <clears throat> Big thank you guys for hopping in the chat tonight. I'm going to let you go. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the new stand gimmick, so I'll just have to leave with a thumbs up. And thank you guys for joining me. See you next time.